Just about every culture has stories of people or creatures living on the moon. Now an eye-opening video seems to raise the idea that the legends could be right, and that we humans may not have been the first or even the most recent visitors to our nearest neighbor. Moscow, Russia, May 2019. A photographer sets up to shoot a full moon over the city. He's struggling to get focus when this leaves him more than a little moonstruck. First, three black circles cross in front of the moon. And almost as soon as they pass, even more come into frame. We stabilize the frame and zoom in. There's no question, a cluster of objects is flying in a loose formation. Could these circular objects be asteroids or a fleet of alien craft? If they are, astrophotographer Andrew McCarthy calculates their size based on the moon's diameter and an estimated orbit 60 miles above the surface. If these objects were orbiting the moon, they would have to be two to three miles wide. If they are UFOs, they would be almost 40 times the size of the largest craft in Earth's orbit, the International Space Station. So who or what is capable of building so many superstructures and putting them into lunar orbit? So, are we looking at something huge orbiting the moon, like a fleet of UFOs or a cluster of asteroids? Or are we taking the wrong perspective? Is it something smaller and closer to Earth? We ask our experts to shed light on the mystery. First, astronomer and video effects designer Mark D'Antonio analyzes the video and confirms it's real, not photographic trickery. I know this camera very well. You can zoom in very close to the moon. As you can see, this is an actual image from his camera. So could they be oversized satellites we Earthlings put into lunar orbit? There are a lot of spacecrafts orbiting the moon, but they're not in the same orbits and they're not in the same areas. Another important fact, hundreds of astronomers observe the moon every night. So you'd think anything odd popping up in its orbit would have set off alarms around the world, right? Still, NASA's Bob Anderson thinks they might be satellites, just not in the moon's orbit, but in ours. At first, I thought it might be satellites circling the Earth or a group of satellites that are orbiting the Earth. That would make sense because it's getting crowded up there with actual clusters of satellites like SpaceX's Starlink network. The company has launched over 1,700 so far with the option to add another 10,000. This seems to be case closed, except in studying the video more closely, Anderson and D'Antonio both see something that doesn't match up with satellites. Right here, these objects are coming close to each other and then getting far away. So that negates the possibility that these are satellites. Maybe we're actually looking at birds. They fly around willy-nilly, okay, haphazardly through the sky. The birds and their flapping wings form silhouettes that appear on the camera sensor as round objects. It's very likely that we're looking at migratory birds of some kind. Satellites don't speed up and slow down. And the video was shot and made during migration. So we're going to call this one Migrating Birds. Still, the space around the moon could be getting crowded soon. NASA's Artemis program aims to return humans there by 2024, and Jeff Bezos and Elon Musk plan to build lunar bases. February 25th, 2021. Residents of Queensland are going about their business when this tears open the sky. Twin bright streaks tracing the same flight path, making this a peculiar video even by today's UFO standards. What the f is that? What the hell is it? That is insane. Look, it's just disappeared. Take a closer look. At first glance, they look like meteors. But do meteors fall in a row like this? And do they have such long tails? Hundreds report seeing these streaking objects. And some suspect they are somehow connected to a secret base almost 1,000 miles away. Another area in Australia that's been known for curious activity would be Pine Gap, Australia. There have been very frequent recordings of all kinds of unexplained things in the night sky in that area. Pine Gap is a top secret American base in the Australian outback that we know tracks and spies on satellites. Many also believe it conceals an underground city where scientists develop a wide variety of clandestine projects involving UFOs. 
There are numerous stories of flying disks appearing in the sky over the base, and it's rumored to contain a plasma gun capable of shooting down anything in low orbit. It's alleged that there is a lot of experimentation and dark technology that has gone on there. Construction at Pine Gap started in 1966, the height of the Cold War. So it's often referred to as Australia's Area 51. But is there really a connection between Pine Gap and these streaking lights? We turn the video over to the experts. First, we ask astronomer Mark D'Antonio if these flaming objects could just be strange meteors. Meteors move anywhere from 10 to 20,000 kilometers per hour when they hit our atmosphere. This is moving way too slow. It's only moving at a few times the speed of sound. So could these objects have originated from Pine Gap? Our experts look at the key evidence that the objects themselves are on fire and say no. A plasma ray would look like a laser beam or a bolt of lightning, and an exploding missile would send parts flying in all directions, not in this orderly row. So could they be UFOs? If so, NASA's Bob Anderson says an advanced civilization would be unlikely to construct spacecraft that crossed a galaxy only to burn up on arrival. You would not expect it to heat up like that and burn off part of its shield to get into the Earth's atmosphere. Of course, not everything in the sky is a meteor, UFO, or secret weapon. This is sort of the characteristic of a re-entering piece of space debris of some kind. The lightweight materials burn up and fall away first, and the heavy materials like the engines, those continue for quite some time. D'Antonio thinks another big clue is the specific location of the sighting. To the right of Australia in the Pacific is a location that's called the Satellite Graveyard. And when satellites are purposefully deorbited to crash back to Earth, they're deorbited into this one spot in the ocean. In fact, Australia is sandwiched between two areas where most satellites are deliberately crashed. More than 300 spacecraft have broken up and dropped there. They are the most remote regions of the ocean and farthest from populated areas. When D'Antonio digs deeper, he finds this object might be an especially big piece of space junk that's separated into these pieces upon re-entry. What this turned out to be was a Chinese long march that was sent to the satellite graveyard in the ocean. China's long march rocket has a massive booster measuring 35 feet long and 9 feet wide. With roughly one satellite crashing into the ocean every few weeks, D'Antonio has some advice. Be very careful when you're out there. You might get hit by a satellite. OK, joking aside, we're going to agree with D'Antonio and call this one space junk, an expired Chinese rocket. NASA has recently scolded the Chinese for what it considers irresponsible behavior in the disposal of expired space equipment. March 2021, the Fagradolsviak volcano in Iceland ends a nearly 900-year dormancy with an explosive blast. It's beautiful, but what's really eye-catching is this. A live feed camera set up to observe the eruption captures what appears to be two mysterious blue orbs hovering in the plume of smoke above the lava. Both seem unfazed by the heat and toxic gases. And when we zoom into one, we can see just how blue it is. There are roughly 50 volcanic eruptions going on at any time around the world, and many include strange lights and flying objects like these. At Arenal Volcano in Costa Rica, and this incident in Puebla, Mexico, near the volcano called Popocatépetl. In fact, sightings near volcanoes are so common, filmmaker Darcy Weir produced a documentary called Volcanic UFO Mysteries about the phenomenon. We have so much documented evidence of UFOs around the volcanoes. It's possible that they may be energy events that could be offering a fueling supply to some of the UFO craft. Just one volcano can produce more power than the combined nuclear arsenals of the United States, China, and Russia. So UFOs could use the heat from a lava to store and produce energy. Or another theory, volcanoes provide access to a network of underground alien bases all over the world. Some people believe, well, if you build a base in a place that's very dangerous for people to visit, mankind that is, well, 
that's a perfect defense and no-go area. This goes back at least as far as 1947. Aviator Kenneth Arnold was flying over Mount Rainier, a dormant stratovolcano, and he claimed he saw a string of flying saucers. He's credited with coining that term. So why are UFOs attracted to volcanoes? And what exactly are we seeing in this video? Let's ask our experts. Let's consider the earthly explanations. First, could these be drones trying to record the eruption? Geologists studying volcanic eruptions will use drones that remotely transmit video back for scientific reasons. The temperature of lava spewing from a volcanic vent can reach 2,200 degrees Fahrenheit, hot enough to melt most earthly metals. For a drone, that would be a short one-way trip. But these orbs were visible for at least 30 minutes, far longer than drones could take the heat. And when we look at the volcano in daylight, a whole new set of theories arises. It's surrounded by hills, so maybe the orbs aren't actually in the air. They're on hillsides on the far side of the volcano. Could they be tourists or scientists with flashlights standing nearby to study the lava flow? Where the temperature around you could approach 500 degrees just in the air around you, where a piece of paper that you put down on the ground will instantly light up on fire and flash the flame immediately. It's very hot. It's not a place for humans. They could not be flashlights, in my view. So maybe the answer is that the orbs spewed from the volcano itself and landed on the surrounding hills. D'Antonio notes their strange color. You can have what has been termed as blue lava. It's actually sulfur that's burning and burning sulfur burns blue. Also known by the Indonesian term api biru, blue lava usually burns along the ground and not in the air, and it's not often seen in Iceland. Looking close, the stationary orbs do appear to be flatter on the bottom, suggesting they may actually be sitting on a surrounding slope. It's a very rare phenomenon, but it does happen. And I think that we're actually witnessing blue lava here as well. I think that it's fascinating. So we know blue lava is rare in Iceland, but that's going to be our verdict, at least for now. Still, that doesn't explain all those UFO sightings around volcanoes the world over. Darcy Weir continues to investigate the subject, and we will too. Central California, spring 2021. Andrew was in his backyard taking pictures of the sun to film a rare event, a solar flare. However, I captured something that was completely different and equally surprising. It was this. Seven spherical objects fly over the surface of the sun. They seem to be moving in unison, almost flying in formation. Let's slow it down and play it again. To McCarthy's professional eye, this can't be a quirk of the camera. Sometimes when capturing images, specks of dust will fly across the camera, but it's pretty clear that's not what we're looking at here. Whatever these objects are, they're clearly in a formation, and they're not behaving the way dust usually does on camera. So on this show, we have to ask, could Andrew have captured a fleet of very large UFOs flying in formation crossing near the sun, or something smaller and explainable closer to his camera? We could be looking at an example of superior alien technology, or we could be looking at an example of something terrestrial that I simply don't understand. In fact, McCarthy has previously postulated that the sun would make a good refueling station for an alien craft. The sun's corona is millions of degrees. It's actually the hottest part of the sun. So it would be a smart place for an alien spacecraft to refuel its ship because of the abundance of energy. Author Alexis Brooks brings up another theory. Could they be living beings inhabiting the sun itself? Could these be craft or beings, sentient beings, in fact, that are coming from inside of the sun? When you think of the historical record, particularly our religious literature, that talks of the sun as a god. The emerald tablets of Thoth all talk about the sun being sentient, being alive. It wasn't just the ancients. In 1795, prominent astronomer William Herschel, who had discovered Uranus, theorized that the sun was inhabited by beings who have adapted to its extreme conditions. So, life on the sun? Sounds crazy, right? But here on Earth, we're constantly finding life in the most extreme places. Microbes around underwater geothermal vents thrive at temperatures of over 200 degrees Fahrenheit. And some worms flourish in the Arctic ice. But before we cozy up to the theory of solar organisms, let's see if our experts have any other bright ideas.
NASA's Bob Anderson says lens flares or other camera distortions can appear to be objects near the sun. But he doesn't think that's the case in Andrew's video because of how solid the objects appear and how they move in straight lines across the frame. I do not believe that they're part of hot pixels or cameras distortions or angles or anything like that. I believe that these objects are real. So could we be looking at real Earth satellites in orbit? When I first captured this, I thought I may be one of the first astronomers to capture the Starlink satellites in formation crossing the face of the sun. Starlink is a vast array of satellites being launched to bring internet access to remote regions of the Earth. They're released in a cluster before spreading out around the globe. However, I was able to quickly rule that out as I was able to determine the Starlink satellites that had been launched that week were actually on the opposite side of Earth at the time. So could it be an armada of spacecraft flying in formation? He's looking at the sun, and that's a 93 million miles away, and those objects are very large compared to the sun. So if they were spacecrafts, they would be the size of the planet Venus flying across there. Because of that issue of perspective and proportion, Bob Anderson thinks we could be looking at something flying at a much lower altitude. What I believe you're looking at here are birds. This is a migratory set of birds. You got one bird leading, and you got a very interesting V formation. You'll see that they're wiggling, they're moving. And it almost as if the birds are flapping their wings as they go across the face of the sun. Because of the V shape, and because Andrew shot the video in April, our verdict is we're probably looking at migratory geese or swans. Whether or not there's life in the sun may soon be answered because the Parker Solar Probe is scheduled to touch the sun in 2024.